Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 480 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we have the full crew here this week kicking things off with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. How are you this fine Monday, Richard? Good morning, Seth. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, too. Got to play a little bit of Outlaws of Thunder Junction early next week. The set's dropping tomorrow. It's super sweet, so I'm I'm excited. But we got another co-host in Krim. Good morning, Krim. How are you? Morning, morning. I'm pretty excited as well. Also got to play some Junctions, uh, so I was pretty hyped on that. So today for our podcast, we're going to be bouncing around a little bit. I don't have any like super huge topic, but we want to talk a little bit about doing the Magic Arena streamer event, the early access thing, kind of first impressions, Outlaws of Thunder Junction and the event itself. There's a bunch of Moto news. Uh, Moto did some huge updates, added Commander Leagues, a bunch of new products that are really cool. There's some loot merch there's some arena bannings with cards from outlaws of thunder junction so we're gonna be bouncing around from here to there talking about all that stuff and more before we get into it though a reminder that today's show is brought to you by card conduit and card conduit's the easiest way to sell your magic cards and if you ever get tired of the hassles of buy listing you can skip them with card conduit you can use their curated service and send in as many cards as you want with a buy list value of a dollar or more and pay just a five percent service fee and if you want to do a bit of work you can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards in advance and pay just a 2% fee. And either way, you're going to get a detailed report with the results and a fast payment once your order is processed. And right now, you can even get another 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtgoldfish. Card Conduit, it's the easiest way to sell your magic cards. So thank you to Card Conduit for supporting the show. And let's talk some magic. And let's start with, I guess, the easy one. Magic Arena Streamer event. Wizards uh, brought back early access, essentially, in a slight different form than before but it, uh, essentially the idea is you get to play uh, streamers get to play a little bit of outlaws of thunder junction for one day early crim i know you were in the vet with me what did you think of uh, outlaws of thunder junction early access event uh okay so the early access event i thought was well first off happy to see it back uh in any capacity but i kind of unfortunately didn't get to play too much because the queues took like 45 minutes to get like one match going so and like some of the games would just be like you know non-games and whatnot so you'll just sit there and you just kind of stare blankly into the, the ceiling and wait as the queue time so a lot of it was queue times uh for me but uh outside of the queue times i did have a lot of fun jamming like you know uh or had fun jamming the cards you know i've been waiting to try out so that was the bright spot, I guess, in all of this, uh, was mostly just trying out, uh, uh, I got to try out the new, what's his name? Satoru. I really like the new Satoru. That dude was fun. Uh, kind of makes me wish that we had more ninjutsu support. How many people forgot that ninjutsu, by the way, is still in standard, but yes, it's still in (laughs) standard and Satoru was kind of like that, that sweet engine you needed early that, that I kind of been wanting, uh, for the deck. But there's there's still a little bit of a need for a bigger top end for ninjutsu. But for the most part, it was really fun uh, being able to play with Satoru. Do you think ninjas are good now? Like we got what two months or three months? Like they they rotate out with Bloomboro. So do you think there's a yes. chance we get a real ninja deck in the next couple of months, or is it a slightly better tier three deck now? I well, I had fun. With ninjutsu. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, let me let me read it right. I had fun with ninjutsu. Uh, I think that like the, if they had supported it a little bit more, it would have been really really good. Uh, but for right now, it's just a fun thing. There were a lot of other cool cards that we got to try, like you know, like the combo, the rush of dread combo, things like that. Uh, as you'll probably see up on the goldfish website. Uh, but yeah, like, mm, oh god, ninjutsu. I wish they actually supported it. I I gotta say I had some of the same issues with you with the event itself like I'm so glad they brought back early access whatever streamer event whatever they're calling it now so it's I think it's a really good really important event but I ran into a lot of the same issues with like long queue times sometimes I'd like play the same person three times in a row apparently we were like the only two people trying to play standard at the time so we just kept queuing into each other again and again and again Uh, so I'm glad they brought it back I think it's probably an easy fix i also noticed a lot of people in past events were like 
posting on social media about how they were invited to this one. And I know they said, I actually asked someone about it and they said, well, we wanted to be kind of like a smaller group this time. So I think maybe you just have to like let more people in next time. So there's more people in the queues and in the drafts, but I'm glad it's back. And I think it's an easy fix to like get around some of the issues that this event had. As far as the cards itself, the set's actually pretty sweet. The card that surprised me the most, and I wasn't playing this card, but Tiny Bones Joins Up was everywhere. So many people were playing that card with like crime stuff. And mm. Tiny Bones into Gisa is like, my God, is that almost unbeatable? Like, because Tiny Bones joins up to you, it sits out every time a legend ETBs, you commit a crime. Gisa comes down, immediately makes uh, this huge board full of zombies. So I was actually kind of impressed by how good like the crime decks were. Uh, Oko absolutely sucks. I tried to build an Oko deck. My God, is that a bad planeswalker? It is so incredible. I can't hey, believe hey, Oko hey, went hey, from hey. like breaking the game to like the, I'm breaking my heart. Like the worst planeswalker I've ever played with. <laughs> You don't know. You don't know that. What if What if you just haven't built the right shell yet? You got to believe. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to eat my words in about like a month when Oko breaks the format again. So maybe that, ma we might have just missed something. Wait, wait, maybe with that Tybalt 2.0? Did you play Jace? Yo, yo, J hey, do not. Jace the truth, Jace? Oko hot trash. Is that the conclusion? <laughs> Jace I is did. actually still the truth, by the way. I, I love Jace. Jace was super solid. <laughs> I didn't I didn't actually play with Jace. I did a lot of plotting. Did you play with or against the plot mechanic at all, Krim? Because that one uh, I thought was yes. really interesting. Cause I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. Is this gonna be worth it? Why do I want to pay for my creature now? Get it in the future. But I ended up coming away from early access, feeling like plot's actually a very powerful mechanic. Like Slickshot show off is busted, but even like Railway Brawler, the like mythic rhino thing, people were popping off with, like dropping that into play and then following it up with another creature. So I think that plot's actually gonna be a lot stronger than I expected. Oh yeah. Yeah, plot felt really good. Um yeah. There's the, I, I saw a few decks that were like chaining plots, like Simic, mm -hmm. uh, like I think from uh, like like oh. chaining a bunch of plot spells, and then eventually it would ramp a ton, right? Yeah, you got that dock whatever two drop Simic thing that makes all your plot stuff two less. People were like playing that to like yeah. reduce the cost on all their plot stuff. Yeah, that was oh. that was really impressive. There was also the saddle aggro, like mounts dot deck. Did you see that? There, there's like actual mount aggro because there's the four two. Whenever a creature enters play, there's all the things where if it saddles something, it gets like hex proof and, and and like pumps all the the mounts by one one. Dude, there was actually a lot of things running around. I don't know if they'll stick in the real like me like meta, but they do look really fun. Right, like like horse bob, uh, all of that, and like the, these were these were some wild, wild looking decks. Kind of interesting to see and play, just because you know the theme of the whole set. Yeah, I definitely saw some saddle decks. They didn't really impress me. The horse bob and so forth. Like it's cool that you can play them, but I don't know if they're actually they're actually very good. Did anything else stick out, Cram, as far as stuff that either? Under or overperformed uh, during early access for you oh. or stuff that you saw other people doing. Sorry, it's been a it's been a, a long weekend, and <laughs> so I finally I finally okay, I got to play with Kervik. Uh, that was a card that Ooh. actually did a lot better than I thought it would. Um, but I I don't know if like I I got to play test it a lot more. Uh, but Kervik or Kervik was like you got to cast a black spell from your yard again whenever you committed a crime. Uh, that card ended up being pretty sweet. You get a token copy of whatever you cast from your graveyard. So, you know, I didn't mind like discarding stuff to Lily and then just playing it again. Uh, just, just going over and over and over, just like kind of like looping my spells. So that was actually super solid. Uh, the Russia Dread deck. The Russia Dread combo with Bloodletter felt pretty, pretty loose. Uh, only because, let's be honest. I never, as cool as it was, I don't think I ever found a window to actually just play the combo, right? Like, it was all sorcery speed and then kind of got hosed when you try to go for it. So I'm wondering now, I was mono black to begin with, but I was, I think, on the live action event, or live action, uh, during the... the <laughs> during the event, early access, I think... Whatever, the early that. access event. I think I kind of want to try blue black combo because then you get to go mech link and also have rush of dread all centering around blood letter of Aklazots. So 
Uh, I'm going to see how that goes, because that combo, I feel like, is just right there. Also, Terror of the Peaks might still be good. Oh, my God. Yeah, Terror of the Peaks is really scary still. I died to a lot of Terror of the Peaks. One card that impressed me a lot, and this card we thought was one of the best in the set, but it kind of backed it up with Smuggler Surprise. I saw a few people oh. doing, like, Smuggler Surprise shenanigans, dropping Terror of the Peaks Galtas into play with it, and it was, like, doing some really absurd stuff. Uh, other cards that I wasn't expecting to be good that looked really good, uh, Vadmir, the, like, two-drop crime thing that's just a two-mana two-two, but yeah, whenever you can make crime, it grows. I thought that card was going to be absolutely horrible, but it turns out it's pretty easy to crime. So I played against it a couple of times where it was like a 6-6 six, six lifelinker on turn four just beating me down. So it's it's kind of a removal check card. Like, yeah, you can just kill it uh, if you have the removal spell, but it actually snowballs more than I expected. And then Outcast Trailblazer, the three drop plot thing that when it ETBs, you make a mana. And then when a creature, power four greater ETBs, you get to draw a card, another creature. A lot of people were playing that. And that was a card I was like, eh, it's a three mana four two. It's going to trade down with two drops a lot but it turns out that you can just like plot it and follow it up immediately with another creature using the mana it makes to draw a card off of it and then it's like all upside so that card i think was a lot better than i expected to those are some of the cards that like stuck out to me wait 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 we i gotta ask you then what <laughs> we all ran into it do you believe it's real or a, an early access meme oh. skeletons oh. Oh, oh, I got a better one than that, too. Richard, but there's yeah. a Skeletons aggro deck, and it, it, it actually no, was kind of fast. Ah. <laughs> I, I, I was laughing at it at first. Like, first time I played against it, I was laughing because like, it's Skeletons. There's no way. But then whatever that enchantment is, like Corpse of the Lost or something, that yeah. thing's scary. It, like, makes a body. All your skeletons have haste. It turns out, like, Tiny Bones a skeleton. Forsaken yeah. Miner's a skeleton. So it's, like, a lot of creatures that are already good just accidentally or skeletons so i don't know how legit it's gonna be but uh the deck that oh my goodness this deck i don't know if this deck will be real if it is it's like a pretty crimmy deck did you run into the oh i always want to say astral cornucopia the cornucopia oh, deck the five there's color like, one yeah there's so they printed that mana rock which i thought was one of the worst cards in the set the cornucopia which whenever you cast a spell for the first time each turn you gain life equal to the number of colors in the spell so there was this five color control deck that was just like trying to play as many cornucopias as possible and just playing every multicolor removal spell to fairy counter spell and that deck was I don't know how good it is, but I definitely played against some people that were at like a hundred life and I just like couldn't win. They just like every, they just cast spells, kill my stuff. And next thing you know, they're like, like 70 life with all the mana, all the cards. Could that be real, Krim? Do you think five color cornucopia control is like a legit deck? Uh, that is a, a very early access friendly deck. <laughs> uh, I will say that is the, uh, <laughs> it does nothing for a very long time. So, uh, any, uh, maybe, maybe your control matchup, you can cook a little bit, but like everything else will destroy you in like <laughs> seconds. Oh, very yeah, that new, is true. New, new, uh, very early access event friendly. That is, that is the new, that is the new phrase. <laughs> We're going to, I'm going to use it. <laughs> Early access. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just early access friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No deck is bad. Uh, early anyway. access accessible. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's any other thoughts on Outlaws of Thunder Junction or early access before we move on to uh, some other topics? Um, What did you I have one question. What do you think of Tony Bones? I think it's. Uh, I think it's still good. Like, so, so Tiny Bones, you don't get in hits with it that often, but it still, like, trades up a lot of the time. And then sometimes it really does pressure and make your opponent trade a good creature for your 1-1 one -one because they have something good in the graveyard. So I will say I saw so many Tiny Bones. I think I saw it trigger, like, two or three times. But even when it doesn't trigger, it still does, like, pressure your opponent in a weird way. So I th still think Tiny Bones is actually pretty good. Yeah, I, 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 I still can't get a read if it's good or not, because it was hailed as like, you know, is this the new Raghavan? And I'm like, no, not not oh, really. But no. but like it is it is a decent one drop. I I, I was wondering that, too, like how often it, it connected for you. It connected a, a, a few times for me, but I just liked it in my ninjutsu deck because it's a one drop with death touch and most people won't block it. 
<laughs> I had a game, I think I was playing Jim Davis, and he was playing the skeleton deck, and I had a, a tiny bones on turn one, and I countered it on turn three, the corpse of the lost thing, and then the next turn I just hit with the tiny bones and recast it and like ran ah. away with that game. So the upside is really <laughs> high. It's nowhere near as consistent as Ragavan, but it is a one drop that like has this oops, I accidentally like cast your five mana thing and just like won the game upside. So I do think it like the upside is there. It's not Ragavan though, but I think it's it's I don't know, play a copy or two in your black decks like uh, i think it's fine so, anyway so tiny bones what? is early access accessible is what you say <laughs> I, I, early, early <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right let's let's keep moving on let's move on from the world of outlaws of thunder junction and magic arena to the world of magic online so we got a bunch of big mobile oh news this week uh lots and lots of big news richard what is happening new on magic online all right. Um, Moto's been cooking. They, they've been going hard on Commander. So they have uh, revamped their uh, new player experience. Uh, so the, the cards you get for free have been upgraded. Uh, there's a huge list of them. Uh, of note, uh, they give you uh, a ton of cards. I think like 5,000 cards. And a lot of the focus on Commander now. Uh, so they're they're giving you uh, dual lands. They call out the scry lands as being special lands that they're giving you, so that everyone has a good mana base. I don't know about that one, um, but the the other Finally. thing, the other thing is there is a I believe it's forty dollars, uh, thirty nine dollars for a commander workshop, two thousand cards, and they are bringing uh, the good commander stuff. Uh, so some of the cards they've highlighted here is Wheel of Fortune, sort of Feast and Famine, Orborg, things like that. Uh, so that you can kind of jumpstart your commander playing on Moto. And, and why is that? Well, they are bringing commander leagues. Uh, so CDH and casual commander leagues to Moto. So Moto is uh, going all in on this commander stuff now, apparently. What do you guys... What do you guys think? Does it have all the cards? Does it does it have <laughs> it has all, all the cards, the cards. that are available on Moto? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So it's Moto uh, accessible. Okay. Okay. So we've got a Moto <laughs> accessible card pool. So, so, uh, so for people that don't get the joke, so we we switched away from Moto for Commander Clash, and one of the main drivers for that is the card pool between Moto and Paper is increasingly. Uh, differing to to a large extent where multiple staples are missing. So Moto's having issues getting universes beyond uh, stuff on, onto the client. So uh, Doctor Who is not there. Fallout is not there. Um, what's the other set? There's one more set that's uh, not there. Doctor Who, Fallout, uh, Warhammer? Warhammer. Warhammer. Warhammer is not there. Warhammer. Yeah, yeah and, and, and the biggest scary part was Warhammer's code up ready to go. But uh, they, they don't have the green light to, to flip it on, right? So it's not a resourcing issue. It's some kind of licensing Probably contract licensing. Yeah, issue. So, so Warhammer, I, I, they did end up putting in the store for a limited time, which is a good thing. But it was for sale for like two weeks, and now they can never sell it again. So uh, I don't know if that's actually a good solution. It's kind of like a new reserve list on Magic Online for some of these universes beyond cards. But I guess it's better than not having them at all. But sorry, Graham, I interrupted you. Go go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I, 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 I am genuinely curious if they'll ever get all of it online. And then on top of that... Dude, what? How does a league work? Like, hold on. So let me get this straight. I go into this. I stare at the, the, the menu. I choose CDH. I have a deck preloaded, right? And then I just go in with that. That's probably going to be a lot easier. But what's to stop me from just taking my CDH deck or a stronger deck or what I perceive to not be CDH? Could be a 7, but somebody con considers it like a 50. So, like, you know... Uh, into a casual queue. I, I don't understand. How, how's this? So, uh, and then and then once you put prizing on casual, isn't that kind of weird? Isn't that kind of like, it's, it's a little bit weird, right? So I, the casual leagues are a little bit weird. And I'm not sure what, I'm not sure if they serve that much of a purpose, honestly. Like 
I guess the upside is that people are less likely to randomly scoop because you had to pay an entry fee to get into the event. So if you have an issue with like playing with randoms and they just drop out an hour into the match and it's anticlimactic, maybe it helps there. Their solution to the prizing problem is for casual leagues, you vote for who gets the prizes. So you pay an entry fee and then you, I guess, based on who was nicest at the table or something. Like, I don't know how you determine what you vote on. Uh, I don't know. What do you think of this, Richard? What do you think of this voting for who wins thing? <laughs> you know how we get all annoyed when Krim is like, I'm not trying to win. I'm going for second. <laughs> right now everyone's <laughs> like, oh. I don't even know what's going on, but I'm just going to try to entertain everybody so that we, you know, I, I get the most votes. I there, there's just be no prizing. It's a lose lose no matter what you do, right? If you if you if you give it all to the winner, then then that incentivizes pub stomping. If you incentivize voting for random, like like let's say you're just mana screwed, right? And then someone does something funny, like they get all the votes, you get not, you feel terrible, right? Or you uh did the crib job and like police the table, kept her over to the game, and then some journal pops off with this like five card jet combo because you like pulled the weight of the table the entire game. You get zero votes. You probably get minus votes for controlling the game. Yeah. Uh, and then I don't know, right? Like it, it's just it should just be flat prizing. Like like everyone gets an equal amount, and you're there to have fun. And the uh like. The prizing should be like, I don't know, like let's say the, the EV of a treasure chest or something is like $3. You, you pay $2. Your prizing is like that difference, right? And then the, the random lottery aspect of it. But, you know, it wouldn't incentivize like weird politics or, you, you know, weird things outside of a normal game of Commander. Uh, because like there's no voice chat still. Like you're, you're not having, you know, a normal conversation. You don't see these people. It's still like online gaming, right? So I don't know. It's... Let's, let's, it's let's, weird. Let's we'll see how call it goes. It gaming, Richard. <laughs> Moto is just online. All right. That's, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's gaming. Calm like, down. like the best thing is it will weed out people that aren't taking it seriously because there, there is some, you know, barrier to entry. So like you won't get someone who just joins and like two seconds in like scoops and leaves. And you're like, what am I going to do with this three player pod? Right. But yeah, I the other thing. The other thing I like about it is it does. Krim mentioned like pub stomping earlier. It, having a CDH league and a normal league, maybe it like helps separate that out a little bit that you're not going to have, you know, when you play a moto and you see like just the casual rooms and it's all the no counters, no RAS, no <laughs> like the huge list of like, don't do any of these things. If you want to join my game, maybe giving competitive players a place like if you want a CDH, you can go here. Maybe that's a positive. The CDH events actually just pay out based on winning. Like if you win, you get prizes. Yeah. There's no voting or anything. That so that one makes a lot of sense to me. The friendly ones where you're voting on who gets the play points, like that one's a little bit awkward. But I do like the addition of the CDH leagues. And I do really like everything they're trying to do, like the commander's workshop thing, the 2000 commander cards for 40 bucks is like almost $200 of value. It's got like so many good cards in it. And the other thing we kind of glossed over is part of the new player experience now is you get actual decks. Now there's a deck from, uh, I think pauper back to legacy. And yeah, they're kind of like budget friendly. Like the modern deck is literally a like slightly updated budget magic. In fact, deck that we played a few years ago, uh, but you're getting actual decks, So you can get a new account on magic online and have like a commander deck a braids deck or you can have a pauper delver deck or a pioneer mono white humans deck a legacy burn deck and just jump right into it so i think these are all like really good changes and i still think that Magic Online is maybe the best way to play Commander digitally. Like, it's definitely the best way to play digitally. It might be the best way to play online. I think it's bad for what we're trying to do in content because of the missing cards is awkward for content. But when it comes to just, like, I want to play a quick game of Commander with my friends, you don't have to, like, have webcams going. You don't have to, like, deal with physical cards or, like, you know, any of that stuff. You can just hop on and, like, play a game. So assuming the client is functional and not crashing all the time, which Moto goes up and down. But, like, as long as the client's running well, I think this is, like, a huge positive, right? Even if it's not great for Commander Clash because it's awkward that we're missing a bunch of staples. I mean, I, I've been happier since we switched, so I, I, I have no issues. <laughs> I, 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 so I, I, I've been a Mono apologist for so long, and I think One Piece has brainwashed me. So if you don't know One Piece, One Piece has no yeah. official online client. Oh, so God. Grand Prix level tournaments 
are run with like shady laptop webcams at like weird <laughs> angles and terrible lighting. Yeah. And like I've I've gotten like kind of used to that. Like the the biggest Wait, problem. Wait, did you compete? Did you the, compete in the? Yeah, on, I, I may be online? registered for some regionals. Okay. Yo, the uh, competitive integrity of <laughs> of of the OPTCG online. Yo, is, I, I is play Katakuri. Comedy. My deck is like half nerfed when we play online because our mechanics don't work. But <laughs> the, thing about, the thing about Moto is this: being able to pass priority proficiency uh, proficiently is a very important skill. And a lot of people can't do it. And if, when they cannot do it, the play experience is absolutely miserable. Like, it takes... Uh, I mean, you can see this on Clash ourselves. Even though we are proficient, Moto games take forever. Because you got to keep passing priority. And if you have a counter spell, God forbid, you can't F6 or F8. You got to, like, slowly, you know, F2, <laughs> F2 your way through. When new players come, it's, like, absolutely horrendous. It's like the game just slows to a halt, and you can't just really quit because you want to be courteous, but you're, like, trapped in here for this two-hour game, and uh, I don't know that they have done anything to address this. Like, the priority passing with four players is terrible, um, and there's that that's an yeah, advantage that like spell table out. would have. I guess right? that's true. As as Seth, as but, someone who times out all the time, right? Okay, not all the time. Slight exaggeration. But you do, like, you, you know, like, what we're talking about. It does take a lot just, just to pass priority. Like, and, and we know what we're doing. Point. We know what we're doing, right? It, yeah. like, that's, that's the problem, well, right? <laughs> <laughs> you I, all know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think the timing out mostly comes from being laggy. But you are right. We've seen that on Commander Clash this year, right? That when last year playing on Moto, it was very regular that it would be three hours plus to get in a commander game and then some percentage of those games would end up crashing before they ended anyway so it would have been even longer potentially if the game had like went to its full conclusion and now like our commander games are significantly shorter just because you don't have to click okay to everything so there are drawbacks to it but still like if you don't have like a friend group to play with how do you get a spell table game when you go to a discord and try to like meet people who want to like play games with you that's like kind of a big ask socially moto you just hop in a league just like you do with modern you just hop in pay your five ticks like play your games i think there's some is it, ideas isn't, can't you do that on spell table social is you it just pick a button and it matches format? you randomly, you know? If not, like, oh, I've just... never actually, I've never played random. Can you just do that in spell table? Today I learned I, that that's true. You might be right. You can. If not, there must be a Discord with auto matchmaking where you just like queue up and then it does the thing. Like we could do it with One Piece. I'm sure we could do it with Magic if no one has done this. Uh, you, but, no, dude, dude, I hope you're not talking about the, the, the online client that is very loose of One Piece, right? Dude, that, that is how One Piece is played, Krim. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, but, like, dude. How is there uh, not endless cheating in One Piece tournaments if that's the setup? There, is there, there is endless, endless cheating, cheating in One Piece. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> there okay, is, but, right? But you it's just like accept so it. Bad. Like, you're, you're, it's like streaming, right? You're like, someone's stream sniping me and I just got to do better. <laughs> right? Like, I just, but, I'm just going to have to be so much better that I'll play you. And like, that, that's, that's what we accept, right? Like, how do you, you know, how do you do big events while streaming? Well, you just accept that they know your hand and then you're a Kibler, you'll outplay them. You're fine. <laughs> but right? are these that's events with like, special? are these events with money on the line? Like, are yes, you yeah. getting, yes. oh, yeah. Like literally Grand Prix yes. level events. <laughs> wow! Yeah. So there's Imagine actually an you incentive play your for Grand people Prix to you too. in your hi. room <laughs> with a Whew. the like cameras that you can probably you can't even tell what's on your opponent's board. So, <laughs> and if you ask them how many cards are in hand, sure, whatever. <laughs> like who cares? They can say so whatever I, they want. I, I don't know how they police it, but you're supposed to have your hands on the the play mat all the time, right? So and so you can't manipulate it, but people take it off all the time, or people don't do mechanics correctly and you can't tell because it's like so blurry right? yeah it's stuff like that uh but so it's oh God. you just, it's like just put one up with piece, it you're one brave piece Richard, on you're brave I, yeah. well, they, they, the they, only... they have they have in-person tournaments too right the, the thing is it's so easy right it's just like i can pay 30 bucks fly to la 
play this thing. I can pay 30 bucks, sit in my underwear at home, play this. Can't, can't be in the underwear, though. Webcam. Uh, so you got to put on some pants. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but wait, so the in-person, you can wear your underwear? Hold yeah. on, hello? Well, I don't know. What are, what are LA decency laws like? <laughs> <laughs> Very different. It's the Wild West out here. Ooh. What they need is I a one-piece character that's just wearing underwear. So you're like, I'm cosplaying. It's fine. <laughs> isn't, that just, isn't that just every, like, like isn't that ace? <laughs> oh, maybe maybe right. i'm still we're, we're so far off topic. but i would i would much rather play the play moto than <laughs> than that style of one piece no, no, okay here's that. the real question would you rather play let's say you had all your paper decks and you're not making a new paper deck like every day would you rather play okay. spell table with a bunch of random people or would you rather play moto with a bunch of random people i would rather play spell table every time <laughs> Every time I am like Richard is a known moto apologist. I'm a known moto <laughs> hater. <laughs> so I hate moto. Honestly, yeah, I, it, I would I would play moto if I had that choice. I would uh, I would stick with moto. Is this because you can't like, shuffle cards? <laughs> I well, I don't have to shuffle cards, that's part of it. But but also you just have access to all the cards, which you know I don't have to worry about like I have five paper decks or whatever. Like I play the same one every time on Moto. I can like throw together a new deck so quickly because all the cards are there. I don't got to dig through my closet and try to find, you know, my box full of bulk rares because I need a card. So for me, that's like the big upside. But yeah, I I agree. How how does that how does that work, though? Like like if because if you're trying to show off your deck and the client just crashes every 30 seconds (laughs) or like the games that never come to a conclusion, you don't even have all the cards anymore. (laughs) Like, you know, it's like every everything tells me that uh, like, again, you know, like, hey, that's that's great that there are people who can enjoy Moto. I I, I would like the cheating of spell table. So if if, so, Seth's point of being able to play any deck I want any time is the biggest reason for Moto. Uh, but if I had a do you really that play? magically assembled my decks, well, right, so they didn't have to keep playing the same deck, I would for sure always play Spell Table uh, over over Moto, I, and I will take the cheating of Spell Table over like the constant grind of like, oh, did you did you pass priority uh, X five eight two? Like, did you did you F six? <laughs> right? Uh, are you gonna counter spell this? Uh, you know, like like that. That was the biggest problem. Uh, with, with Moto for me. And, and like that's why I only played CDH. So CDH, the games tend to be quicker, but even then they dragged on forever. I can't imagine like playing one of our three hour slog fests on Moto with like random strangers. It'll be like five hours, right? <laughs> like yeah. I, I can't oh, imagine. God. It's like the game ends when four people are, are timing out. They're all at like sub 20 seconds. <laughs> like, that would be funny. Yeah, yeah, that would be rough. Well, that's what's going on with Moto. Uh, I would, if you've never checked it out, check it out before. It's uh, you, Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it. I'm a big Moto supporter, but financially, it's be- it's gotten better than ever, cheaper than ever to be able to test out Moto. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some Magic Arena, but first, uh, a word from this week's sponsor. Today's show is brought to you by Shopify. We've been using Shopify for years to run our merch store, mtggoldfishmerch.com. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to our first real life store stage, all the way to the did a million order stage. Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soaps or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere, from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling. Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. What's great about Shopify is it works no matter how big you are. From selling your first tokens to handling your huge ebb and flow playmat campaign, everything was a breeze due to Shopify. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. and Shopify is a global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen and millions Millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow on Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash goldfish. All lowercase letters. Go to shopify.com slash goldfish now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash goldfish. 
All right, so on Magic Arena, uh, we got an update coming alongside Outlaws of Thunder Junction talking about historic and timeless, and specifically what cards are and aren't going to be legal from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Uh, so in historic, they're banning Mana Drain, Reanimate, Commandeer, Force of Vigor. In timeless, they're banning nothing, although they did call out Mana Drain as being a card that uh, they're going to be monitoring to see if it's too much. And they called out Show and Tell, saying that, it's played more than they would like, but they're hoping that maybe something from Modern Horizons or Outlaws of Thunder Junction will be able to kind of dethrone it and set them at a game, right? So they don't want to ban it yet or restrict it yet. They thought about it strongly, but they're, they're going to wait and see if something can shake up the meta. Krim, I know you play these formats a lot. What do you make of, of this announcement? I mean... Okay, sure, yeah, like Mana Drain and, and, and Show and Tell, like, these two should probably go, right? <laughs> like, uh, like these, these two cards definitely should go, but we're gonna see. Timeless has been the Wild Wild West, and I, and I think, what, what was it, what was the exact wording? They're letting t uh, Show and Tell and Mana Drain all play out so that they, c because there's going to be more things right? Like coming down so, the pipeline that might yeah. challenge the power oh, TJ, level. <laughs> MH3. MH3 is the scary yeah. one here. Yeah. 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 They said, so, uh, we expect Timeless to change a lot this year with new format defining cards from Outlaws of Thunder Junction and Modern Horizons 3. We want to see how Timeless evolves before making a decision. Yeah. Wait, what there what are people show and telling uh, in? Omni Science. So and then, Troxa, and then like eventually, it, it's an approach. Yeah. It, it's it's, it's an approach actually Omnitel? Win. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. You pretty much, if you show and tell omniscience, you win that turn, is yeah. normally how it works. Uh, sometimes you have a backup, like a Troxa or something, but that's the main plan. Honestly, I like that Timeless is a Wild West, and I think that's why I want show and tell to be restricted, because I feel like I play against it so much that it doesn't feel this, like, so much like the Wild West anymore, because I know like every third match or something, I'm going to play against someone playing Omnitel, and it just gets very samey. I think the deck's beatable. You can play Taxes decks that are very good against it. If you're going to stack up like Archons and Thalias, I think you can beat show and tell, but I, that's just not that appealing Beth, of a meta to play, me. You just play Lavinia. Lavinia, they, they, yeah, Lavinia they, they is also really good. Lavinia, like they actually cannot beat Lavinia. Can Lavinia beat think, anything else in Timeless though? No, <laughs> like, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> that's usually the problem, no. right? You can you can stack but, all your cards to beat Showtime and have a zero percent win rate against everyone else. <laughs> but sometimes it's about the message, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I mean, you can play Containment Priest as well, and which is but, like I guess passable. So my expectation is, I mean, we'll see. Who knows what's in Modern Horizons 3? If we get force negation type stuff or like free interaction, maybe that could make show and tell fine. Worst case, Watsi has said, like, we know this is an issue. We are strongly considering it, but it, you wait until after Modern Horizons 3, basically. So if it doesn't solve the problem, I'm sure it's going to be gone. What do you think of Mana Drain? What are the odds, Grim, that Mana Drain stays unrestricted and timeless? I mean probably that like like we're talking about post mh3 right post mh3 like this fall like six months from now what are the odds that it's it's not restricted you think probably will end up being restricted along with show and tell i'm hoping that th sorry maybe this is just what i want to happen versus what i think will happen but like yeah like i i no, it there's no way right there's no way it sits around there's no way that show and tell stays like these two cards have somehow overshadowed some of the other powerful show, like you know, uh, special guest cards and things like that by a landslide. Do you know, I I forgot there were other special guest cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do, but the, these ones are just so strong. Yeah, it's wild in a format with necros and all the stuff that's going on in that format. Those cards just really stand out. I think it's almost inevitable. I think Mana Drain's gonna be banned. I can't wrap my head around. There being a format where you can play four mana drains and it's not super swinging and busted. So I imagine that it's it's got to get restricted eventually. What am I missing, Richard? Are we missing anything? Could mana drain <laughs> actually survive? That, that mana drain would be the defining card to play <laughs> timeless yeah. that they don't want to remove. Because what do you want timeless to be? If you want timeless to mirror the older formats, then it's going to be blue based. Right, like like every every single one of the older Eternal formats is blue based, and you might as well just keep Mana Drain there if it's gonna be blue based. Everyone else play blue. Everyone playing Mana Drain anyway. Who cares, right? If you want to get rid of blue, 
somehow make green or black or something the the premier thing. I don't think it's gonna work because you're gonna have to ban like every classic blue card that you bring to the format. Uh, so I I would actually think they're gonna keep mana drain as like the reason to play this format in the same way. Brainstorm is terribly broken, but no one's gonna ban it from Legacy ever, <laughs> right? Like it's it's just it's just there. So what if mana drain is the timeless? thing and that's the thing to to lure you into timeless because you get all you're all gonna play blue anyway you all start with four mana drains in your deck go <laughs> right oh boy the problem i have with mana drain is the swinginess of it like just the like we see it in commander a lot where like you randomly hit some expensive thing and it just like kind of accidentally wins the game or puts you super far ahead and i feel like that's even more a thing in a 1v1 format at least in commander what? you have three other people that can team up on the person who just got you know extra mana from the mana drain but in 1v1 you can't really do that if it's someone just less. hits your big spell and because you you can play it, around mana drain in 1v1 if you're like hey i'm gonna <laughs> cast this 10 drop and if i get mana drain it's over you like you don't cast it whereas in commander you pass and the next person plays their 10 drop you're like what the heck right like why did you do that <laughs> Right, so in one yeah. v one, you can play around the mana drain, and you have your own mana drains. So it's whoever like uses their mana first loses, which yeah, blue, <laughs> right? So. Yeah. Um, I, I, I I don't know if it'll be like like. I I still think that I, it should go, and it is obviously a powerful card, but I need to see how it actually shapes up in timeless because at the same time. I, I do not know what colorless threats and things that they're trying to, like, you know, cast with this. Because everything, again, is heavily pipped. And, like, I get that Mana Drain is powerful. I'm not going to say that it's not. It is a very strong card. And I still think it should be restricted or banned. But I'm curious to just see how it plays before I say anything. But, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that's what it is. Like, it, it is the appeal of timeless it's i get to cast mana drains and do all this other stuff without having to deal with force of wills and etc cetera, etc cetera. i guess we'll find out starting tomorrow when uh, all these new cards officially drop what do you make of the historic bannings so force of vigor common to your reanimate mana drain i i think part of this is differentiating the two formats like he uh, timeless is a format where you can reanimate or mana drain historic you can't the one that was weird to me the two really are Force of Vigor and Commodore. And essentially, Wizard said in the announcement that they don't want Historic to be a free spell format. Like, they just don't think that that's something they want it to be. To me, Commodore and Force of Vigor seem like pretty safe free spells if you're going to allow any. So what do you think? Are they just not going to... No free spells? Is that the new the new rule of Historic? And is, is that a good thing? Modern Horizons 3 design team in shambles. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is where we're at. We only have free spells. We need to just ban every new card we make. Like this, this is a uh, weird that's what timeless line to draw. is for. This is a weird line timeless, to draw. To get timeless. <laughs> it is a weird line. Commandeer never even saw it. Like didn't see competitive play until the One Ring came around, and that kind of made it a fringe card. Force of Vigor is really good, but it's a sideboard card, right? It blows up a couple artifacts and enchantments. It's not like force of will or something that everyone's playing for in the main deck it's kind of like eh, you know sometimes i play to my sideboard I, uh, it is it is annoying though that you don't have like they have force of vigor because then they can answer your blood moons and things like that and some days i'm just tired of getting tightened so i just yeah. play random blood moon things and 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 mm -hmm. it is annoying that they can just free spell answer it as opposed to uh, having to fetch for a basic forest, doing all the basic land work that they need to do. Now they just have Force of Vigor. So I will say that I I, I do think it is a bit uh, like aggressive to ban those right out the gates. But it is also nice to know that I can just hard lock some, some decks out. With, with, I guess Blood Moon isn't legal in Historic, so I don't have to worry about it. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. Well, I, I, I don't think it was like... I, I still don't really play Historic anymore just because Timeless exists, right? Like, Timeless is right there. It's the same, except well, one is strictly... When, when you're sick of Mana Drain, you go play Historic Rim. <laughs> you go play... <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can get sick of that. <laughs> I mean... I'm kind of the same. I I most I think I've stopped playing Historic for Timeless, too, for the most part. But uh, what were you going to say, Richard? Commandeer is the biggest joke on this on this list. So... <laughs> So let me get this straight. Someone deems it worthy to put the seven drop in their deck, and they're gonna have two extra cards to pitch 
to like deal with the threat. And th you think this is the card that's the problem. How about the card that people feel they could just chuck three cards <laughs> out of their hand to deal with, right? Like, mm -hmm. like if you feel you can like discard your entire hand, take this one card from your opponent and win the game, maybe we should ban whatever that one card is. Like maybe that is the problem or, you know, you have infinite cards in hand and you can pitch them all. Like maybe that's the problem, but no, Commandeer must go. So Commandeer is the strangest... The, the strangest card to be banned here. Like, it, it makes no sense. We know why they're doing it. Maybe they should get rid of those pieces instead of doing the Commandeer. Uh, because it, it is... It's three cards. It's seven mana cast, <laughs> cast raw. So uh, that, that, uh -huh. that, that one blows my mind. Yeah. I, I, I mean... Richard, I think whoever made the BNR must have had their their Tron P like Tron cards be, like commandeer. That's what I did in modern to just get a free card. <laughs> in uh in more funny news, creepy news. Let's go with creepy news. Uh so we joked a couple of weeks ago about uh loot the key to everything in Wizards trying to uh make this character to sell plushies and then they announced they're selling plushies of loot the key to everything. Did you guys did you guys see this? And am I wrong to think that loot looks way creepier in plushy pouch form than on the magic card? It looks like something out of a horror movie to me. Like one of those I, like cute dolls that wakes up and then murders you when you sleep or something. You ever you ever see a pug? Like how yeah. it like like pugs are are they 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 look and they are in pain because they actually cannot breathe properly, but uh they do look so weird that it's cute. Oh god, I and, hate and pugs. That, and that is <laughs> That's like my least favorite dog breed. <laughs> okay, Yo. well then there we have our answer. I think pugs are adorable. Uh, because they look so weird that they are adorable. <laughs> I, I so think Wizards that is how I feel about loot. Knows exactly what they're doing. It reminds you of uh, a Furby. So it, it's, yep. it's pulling on that '90s nostalgia. Uh, what was that? What was that like '90s horror movie where they're like these like cute little things or something, and then they get like water on them and they turn into like monsters? Uh, Leprechauns? Gremlins? <laughs> yeah. Gremlins. Is it Gremlins? I don't remember. I, like, like, yeah. I, like I, I feel this design is just like a, a kind of like the boomer callback to your childhood and you, and you associate with that and then you get these. Oh, I didn't realize this, but Hasbro owns Furby. It's all making <laughs> sense. Is this, is this the 25th anniversary of Furby? It might be the 25th anniversary of Furby and we got to we gotta make sure people remember it. I, mean, I, 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 I think so it doesn't look that bad. I think it's cute. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what you're you doing. Gonna... It's like a dice bag. Like, what, what it's is a it? dice. It's a dice bag. Yeah, it's a, it's a dice. Bag. So, would you? Are you gonna order one to put your dice in? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, why wouldn't I? <laughs> no. It's adorable. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, well, like, you, I love. If you, I think he's cute. If, if you want your loot merch, uh, 20, 20 bucks from Ultra Pro, I believe. And also, it seems like LGSs are also uh, also selling them. So we'll see. I expect we'll be seeing some more loots in the future. It seems like loot's gonna be. A part of the story moving forward, so I wouldn't be surprised to see more loot merch. Maybe I'm like waiting a for loop. for Chris Cox Happy Meal next, toy at the next investor meeting. Like we we've done it. <laughs> Revenues up five million on the back of selling <laughs> plushies. We have developed a new market. I'm like I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Let, let's let's get these like uh, pouch collectors, doll collectors, whatever. Let's get some of their money. Let, let's leave the dolls. Wallet. Um, out of actually, this. Richard, these are, are the action pouch? figures. <laughs> are pouch action collectors. Figures. I mean, I guess someone collects everything. Pouches like, like, are a weird, okay. weird thing to collect. Again, BD babies. Is this a BD baby? <laughs> okay. This could have value. Is there a serial number on this? Hold on. Ooh. Is it serialized? <laughs> You know, we. Yeah, I was thinking though. You know how like Yu Gi Oh Pokemon they show up in McDonald's as like Happy Meal toys. Yeah, we don't really. Magic doesn't really have anything that can do that. What are you gonna put a little Gideon in there or something? Like, what are you gonna? What would the Happy Meal toy be? So maybe this could be the Magic Happy Meal toy. Like, if we end up I in mean, McDonald's Happy Meals because of loot, I I will accept that because isn't that's isn't when that you know how... you made it right. When you're in a Happy Meal toy, you you made it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, isn't that what we were talking about with Logiri? We were like oh, and I, the same same thing. <laughs> oh. I love Logiri because I love cute little Onigiri roll with a sword. It's adorable. How could you not love that? But has it made a happy meal yet though? 
<laughs> yeah, that's the problem. I guess he just wasn't Happy Meal cool. <laughs> is, it, it, is loot that? In before Netflix series canceled, replaced by loot, the anime. <laughs> I would watch that. Are you kidding me? I would hella watch that. <laughs> Uh, all right we have we have one more topic i want to hit up before we do a fish mail so uh basically mark rosewater on his blog got a question about uh the different planes that we've been going to and uh going to like new capenna and the theme changing we saw it in lost caverns of ixalan with going to the same world but a different part of that world and uh mark rosewater said we're experimenting with new mechanical themes on old worlds it's worked well with lost caverns and ixalan less well in murders of karlov manor we'll do more do you guys like sets like that? What do you think of the, like, we're going back to a plane that you've been to before, but we're doing it different this time. The themes are different. Because I feel like we've seen, in the past, I remember them talking a lot about meeting expectations. I think, like, Battle for Zendikar, where, like, people love Zendikar, and then we went to Battle for Zendikar, and Battle for Zendikar was, like, an Eldrazi set rather than a Zendikar set, and you didn't know what an ally was. Remember the Guess the Ally game? Like, is it an ally? Because they just stuck ally on the end of all the creature types. Like, if you don't meet expectations, it's kind of risky, right? If you do Zendikar and it doesn't feel like Zendikar, people are going to freak out. At the same time, Lost Caverns of Ixalan went pretty well. Like, they went to Ixalan. They did it in a new way, a new part of the plane. But it still felt pretty Ixalan to me. What do you guys think of sets like this and Wizards doing more of them? Honestly, I don't care. Just give me cool cards. <laughs> Just give me cool <laughs> like, cards. Like, uh, like, give me cool cards. That's that's what I'm here for. And I, I, I will say that, yes, uh, the, the flavor aspect of it, it's nice. Uh, I do like seeing other parts of the world uh, because it's a big world. And I, I dig that. Do I? <laughs> I, I personally like the wacky, goofy, like, you know, all over the place kind of theme. So the fact that we can go to Ravnica and have a, like a, a bunch of detectives running around, whatever. That's funny, right? That's silly. I like that. Not, I, I'm sorry. I guess I just don't want, need the game to be serious all the time. <laughs> but that's, but it's, that's coming from the least serious person. And that's me. So <laughs> you need to innovate. I, so I think they will keep doing it. So if, if they go back uh, and do the same thing, the results will always be the same, right? But if they try something new, it could crash or it could just pop off hard like loot or Lord of the Rings or whatever, right? Like who knows, right? But there, there's always that potential upside. So they, they're they're always going to like spread out the, the known, true, and tested. That's probably Dominaria or something, right? Go back, do the thing. It's fine, right? And then... When they go back, like maybe to Kamigawa, they're like, well, the first time it kind of sucked, even though people keep asking for it, they really don't want that. We'll give them what they really want, which is like space ninjas or whatever, right? And then here we go. It was a, it was a great success. So if we go back to Battle for Zendikar, and it's, or sorry, to Zendikar, it'll be land-based. But if it's exactly the same as original Zendikar, like, I don't think you would care. Uh, if it's so weird and sucks, then you'll complain about it, like Battle for Zendikar. But what if it was amazing? What if it was Zendikar 5,000 years in the future or whatever, and everyone's like a, a, a cyborg plant now? I don't know, right? And then it, it can so pop off Kamigawa. hard. And then we'll love it, right? So it, we only complain when it sucks. We only complain when it sucks. So you just make it not suck, and it'll be good. That That is my theory. Simply don't just suck. Got it. it. Don't, don't suck, suck, and it'll be good. Like, okay. Like, just okay. Don't yeah. suck. Get good. Got <laughs> if, if Neon Dynasty sucked, we'd all be complaining about how they ruined <laughs> the legacy of Kamigawa by not sticking to the roots, and we should have did True. Arcade and Splice onto Arcade or whatever. But instead, it was amazing, and we're like, wow, yeah, let's, yeah, it was clearly logical that everyone is a cyborg ninja thing now. Yes, of course, right? Like, so just don't suck, and all will be forgiven. <laughs> But is just putting a detective hat on everyone really innovation? Does that count as innovating? Can I do no, that's, 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 really that's, that's why we poo poo on them. That's why we poo poo on them for I, Shadow I don't know. I don't know, Seth. Can you still tell it's Clark Kent when he puts on glasses? No. Who? So, okay. yeah. I guess that's true. Oh, God. Where is it's Superman? <laughs> Also notable that this is Mark Rosewater saying that Murders of Carla Manor 
didn't do that well, basically. So I think this is the that's something the community has talked about a lot, and there's been a lot of like criticism of Murders at Carlisle Manor. And at least in the case of this uh, design aspect, it seems like Botsy it also feels like maybe it didn't execute it as well as they could have. So I guess that's also a little bit notable at least. So yeah, I'm curious uh, if you're watching this somewhere where you can leave comments, let us know. Uh, do you like that style? Is that, what do you think of returning to old planes, but uh, with a new mechanical theme of the world? So very curious, uh, Richard, I think it's fish mail time. Why don't you uh, fish mail us? All right. If you have questions, send them to at MG goldfish with the hashtag MG fish mail. We'll get to your questions on air. Uh, Red Shirt Comics. Watching the Fallout show and realizing the magic set was just a gimmick to promote the series. I have to wonder, is MTG the new Orange County Choppers? Wait, what is... What is I know that? that has to do with a TV show about motorcycles, but uh, beyond what that... What is Orange I, County I Choppers? <laughs> oh, it's the, guy, it's the guy from the meme yelling at his kids. I know that that guy. Wait, the angry, the angry mustache wait, wait, guy. Wait, 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 what? Wait, hold on. We gotta, we gotta Google this. Choppers? Wait, are, don't you live in Orange County, Crim? Don't you know about Orange no. County Choppers? <laughs> no. Did you know that SoCal is more than just oh, the OC? <laughs> oh, it's this guy. Yeah, dude. Oh, what, what's, that what's guy. What's actually dude. from? Orange uh, County Choppers, I, apparently. I think Orange no. County Choppers. Wait, wait, is that, wait, this, this thing is 2003. Reality oh, seven American, seasons. American Chopper. Yeah. What does that well, have to I don't, do with I, the okay. crossover? I have no though. idea. Do that they is just promote me? So I, I, yeah. I, think, I think the realization is that the Fallout set is nothing more than promotional product for Fallout. But what did you think it really was? Is Lord of the Rings set not really promotional product for Lord of the Rings and <laughs> Doctor Who not promotional product for Doctor Who? Like, why I, else would you make I, a product? To promote your product, right? I mean... I mean <laughs> I think that's always true. Fallout ends up being obvious, though, because it lines up with the release of a new TV show. So I think that makes it more like, I, I don't know. It's just easier to see from the audience when it lines up with like, oh, we're trying to promote this new TV show and here's a magic set to go with it. Then I what are they promoting with Lord of the Rings or whatever? Did, okay, hear me out. I don't think... <laughs> What is what are the odds that this is actually just coincidence and it wasn't coordinated? Because I think if they were trying to coordinate <laughs> things better, right? Wouldn't Baldur's Gate have had come out when Baldur's Gate? No, that, that was that, that is known that there were delays because you're doing this yeah. like three years in advance, and then there were delays sure. uh, okay. on either okay. end to to out to out of sync it. But yeah, I, I'll, I'll well, blow your mind if you're not aware of this. Hmm. All of television, all of media, exists. As advertisement. So when someone goes on the, the Tonight Show or whatever, the Late Show. I'm learning. With Jimmy Fallon. You know what? They're not there for fun. They're usually there to promote something. Possibly the latest movie that they're touring and promoting. Or if you watch SNL, when someone guests on SNL, they're there to promote something. And they're not there for fun. It's part of their like movie contract or whatever that they have to go on these shows to promote. Uh, so... I almost expect every universe is beyond that we see coming forth will, will promote something, right? Because otherwise, why are you spending money making a universe is beyond, right? So Final Fantasy will tie in to promote something. Uh, Assassin's Creed will be promoting something, right? And if they do it correctly, it will all line up and be logical. <laughs> if there are problems in the project, it will be illogical, like Baldur's Gate, right? Where it didn't work out because the game took like an extra year or something to develop, and then they couldn't line it up. But... Uh, I expect this to be, you know, going 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 forward. Every universe is beyond will be an advertisement of something or other for for something. The the question is, is there quality behind it, right? Like, did they put effort in and make a good product and just you know they're tying the advertising, or is this like a cheap advertising shill and they didn't put any effort and the product sucks and like what's the point? And like for Lord of the Rings, I you can see they put the effort in, so it was worth it, right? Is yeah. it, isn't that the irony too of like what Fallout is? Like the uh, like Fallout, it riffs I think on that in the the show because I I watched the show, uh, I thought it was actually pretty good, but I don't know the games. So as someone who does not know the video games, I look as like oh the magic set. <laughs> um, so I, I I know that the message behind it though, and uh, some of the episodes is like everything is just marketing to you and selling something to you. So, I mean. It is true. One of the things I worry about is just like the cards are forever. So like 
you risk Hell yeah. dating yourself a lot. Like if you're promoting you're promoting a Fallout show that's relevant now in 2024, but in 2034, maybe everyone hates Fallout. Maybe like something went wrong and, and you know, we don't talk about that anymore. It's been canceled from the internet or maybe it's just like some old show that no one cares about. Like that's kind of the, it reminds me of like, you ever see the stories about the people who like, I got paid $50,000 to tattoo this brand on my body for the rest of my life. Is that what magic is doing? Is that, is that where we're at? Like, uh, cause that would be my only concern. Like, yes, it's promoting something. Everything's promoting something, but that magic card exists in his legal till the end of, until the end of time, to the end of yeah, the game. We we print 50,000 commanders every year and power creep them all. So don't worry. Whatever <laughs> we print today will be effectively <laughs> removed. But it goes all the way. Like, Stranger Things was to promote the Netflix Stranger Things. Right? I, I, I watched yeah. Stranger Things because of the secret layer, right? It worked. It worked, right? Like, they got a viewer out of me, and I liked it. And then I watched, like, three or four, whatever, how many seasons there are of Stranger Things. I watched them all based on one and it's secret layer. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I think if you go through the list of universes beyond, they're pretty much all like that. Like, uh, Walking Dead, they had the podcast and the Walking Dead new season launching. Going back to the very first one, uh, almost all of them line up with something. Doctor Who had a new I'll season tell you going. What? Arcade. I I did not. I did not watch. Arcade. I did not go back Clues, to Walking Dead. Seventy fifth anniversary. And I think ideally it's mutually beneficial, right? Like yes. Magic players see this IP, so they watch the show. And ideally, maybe like people watch the show, and then they're like, "Huh, I like this show. Maybe I'll try this game that has the characters I like in it and try Magic." So. In theory, it could be a good thing for everyone, hopefully. Like, that's, I don't know if it'll work out like that in practice, but it could. If you do, I it mean, well, we're all seeing that already. <laughs> that is, yeah. that is. Just if don't you go suck. You and you're funny yeah, don't and you blow it out of the water. Just, no one cares that you're advertising stuff. But if you go in and you suck, they're like, wow, what a waste of an episode just for an advertisement, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just don't, just don't suck. That's the just title of this podcast. Get good. It'll be fine. Get good. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Richard essentially did say, just get good. <laughs> just get good. All is forgiven. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch Fallout as after I'm done three body mind or three body problem. Yo, three so, mind, three body uh, problem is sweet. Yeah, I it is sweet. That. Have you watched the Chinese version? It is way. I, I, way I did better. not know there was one until I was, bit, I was done with the English one, the Netflix one. Yeah, so the Chinese one is like 30 episodes or something, but it like follows the book very closely. The American one, yeah. like six episodes in, has like reached the 30 episodes <laughs> of the Chinese one. So everything's very compressed. There's no backstory. But so if you enjoy the Netflix one, I would go watch the, the Chinese one. It's a lot more um, science-y and like, you know, like more character development and stuff like that, right? It's more, it's, I think it's more faithful to the books. Because uh, the one of the biggest appeals of the books is like it's very grounded in science. It's like the true science fiction where they talk about science a lot. Uh, but the Netflix one is amazing. Uh, I'm almost done, and then right after that, I'll uh, I'll do Fallout because you know what? I've warmed that up new to the Fallout cards. I've I've warmed up to the Fallout cards. I, I, <laughs> I kind of like it. I'm like, ooh, radiation. Ooh, right. Yeah. I got my I got my I got my foil austere command with the, with the <laughs> what you would call it? Where'd you go? I don't know where it is. But I'm like, yeah, I'm like, oh, I don't know what that character is. You know, that character. I'm like, oh, yes, Fallout. So I, I'm warmed up. That, that, is, that was me and, and the D&D &D world and all of that as well. If you get, also, you can't be saying that or someone's going to yell, he's consuming everything that he's being <laughs> fed. Uh, but like legitimately, <laughs> like, I'm glad you're, you're enjoying it's the like, Fallout I have, I have, like, Look, this is how it works. It, it worked I, on I need me. to watch something. It did it. I have no yeah. real preference, but there's this Fallout thing that everyone's talking about in Magic, and I might as well learn the lore behind the wise Mothman. So, like, why not? Like, that's how advertising works, right? And it, it works. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I, it. It didn't work for Doctor Who with you, though, did it? Doctor Who, we, we it watched like three episodes like, of Doctor We did Doctor watch Who three episodes. That was but three it didn't more like, than we would ever watch, so it kind of yeah, worked. I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah, maybe I guess. Yeah, even if it didn't hook us in to watch all, yeah, all the seasons, I guess we did watch more than we would have otherwise. So, yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, anyway, it's essentially the Fortnite thing, right? Fortnite have now got me. Like, it got me. Oh, it finally oh, got oh, me. Wait, oh, your Fortnite I player crib? Uh-oh. It got me. Uh -oh. <laughs> like, they, Are we admitting this in a public Kaisen. context? <laughs> they had Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, they got like, Yo, no way. <laughs> oh, so, Richard, how do people send in fish mail for uh, for the future? All right. Hit us up on Twitter uh, at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail. And we'll get to your questions on air.
<laughs> and I believe that brings us to the end of episode 480 of the MTG Goldfish podcast. So Richard Krim, thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everyone for listening. Thanks to Card Conduit and Shopify for supporting the show. And we will be back next week to talk about whatever goes out of the world of magic. So until then, have a spectacular week, everyone. And this is a crew signing out.